Okay, let's do office hours. Yeah. Um, should you do a fucking number for CFO? Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Um, what's it? Any particular language? I mean, I just, I just don't want to get blindsided again like we did on the test lab. Not that we were blindsided, I guess, but just like we've done zero. You're trying to be nice to me, huh? What? <laughs> what? Trying to be nice to me, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, we should have known, but like zero and one and two and which we didn't yeah. pass, mm -hmm. that makes sense. But then what if in another case we could have to prove a different one? Uh, any particular CF non-CFL language? Uh, a pumping lemma for CFL's question. Were there any languages on the homework that you said were context free that we could just do a pumping lemma on? Well, if they're context free, you can't prove that it's not context free. <laughs> Sorry, that's not what I meant. I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, And think of an example that's easy ish. All right. How about this one? So, uh, no, let's do no. I keep revising my own example. <laughs> so, so this one's pretty simple. Um, so arbitrary string on both sides of a pound sign, and I want to check whether they're the same or not, and put that in the language if they're the same. If I make the second W, or the first really, reversed, then this language is context-free because yeah. it's on the homework, and I'm not that mean. <laughs> All right, so if I want to show that this language is not context-free, what should I do? Assume, uh, assume L is a CFL, then what should I do? Yep, exists a P for L, no problem. Yep, now we just got to choose string. With what two properties? Least P characters and? It's in the language. Good. Hopefully, I should see no problems with that. <laughs> All right. So, what string should I choose? W to the P and pound sign W to the P. Well, W is not a character or zero one. Any particular string you want me to choose? I'll actually give you a bad choice, and I'll let you try to tell me why it's a bad choice. <laughs> Well, this string zero to the p, pound sign zero to the p, it has at least p characters and is in the language, so we're good. But why should I not pick this string? Because you'll not decrease. Yeah, it'll not work. So what's the decomposition? Well, if I pump a zero on both sides, right? Therefore, I would stay in the language. So a decomposition is is uh, that does work is, uh, what do I call it? U is, I don't care. V is a single zero. Uh, X is, a, is the single pound sign. Y is a zero. And Z is the rest. I don't care what it is. That was another question. We do include the pound sign. I, I'm showing you a decomposition for which you always stay in the language. Yeah, it, it has to, it's a partition of the whole string. Yeah, so X has got to be somewhere I put it on the pound sign because that's a place. Well, no matter how I pump, will I always stay in the language? Yeah, yeah because if I put a zero at the same rate on both sides, I'll have the same number of zeros on both sides, and I'll still have W, W on both sides. I'm, that's going to still have the same problem. So I can't just have pure zeros on both sides or pure ones. What about one zero to the P? Uh, what could be even easier than one zero to the P? One, two, three, four, 
one to the p is zero to the p. Uh, that that would work, but um, there there would be more cases there. So instead, choose w to be. I'm going to reorder it. It doesn't matter. Zero to the p, one to the p, pound sign. Zero to the p, one to the p. Okay. Well, should I look at one decomposition or all decompositions? All, oh, good. Well, the VXY part, is it only at the beginning or could it be in the middle or the end as well? It, it, it could be anywhere, the thing I'm trying to pump. Okay, well, let's see. Suppose that it was uh, VXY, all of it was before the pound sign. Could you pump out of the language? You sure? What if you put more characters into the left half of the string? Yeah, why would that pump me out? I, it, it actually wouldn't matter. The length is longer than the second half. So, so case one, if V, X, Y are, so I'll be, uh, colloquial here. Before the pound sign, pump up. So left hand side would have longer length than right hand side. Uh, and there are two for middle, yeah. Whether or not it includes the pound sign or not. Well, so that's simple, but we have other cases, right? That what if it, the, sorry, what if VXY were all on the right hand side of the pound sign? Uh, not exactly the same, but very similar thing. Just pump up. I would have longer length on the right hand side than the left hand side. So case two. If V, X, Y are after the pound sign, very similar to case one. Because it's almost exactly the same, you would just change left hand side and right hand side. Are those two cases, all of the decompositions. No, what are some other ones? What if V or Y, not the X part, if V or Y contains the pound sign? What could I do to pump out? Yeah, certainly. So I'll move this down. So uh, all decomps such that uh, VXY has length at, no, not at least, has length at most P, VY has length at least one, and U, V to the I, XY to the I, Z in L for all i at least zero. That's just a rehash of what the conditions are. So because of the first condition, vxy could live anywhere in the string. So that's why we got to have more cases of where, where vxy could be. If it's entirely in the left half before the pound sign, then just pump up. I'll have more characters on the left side of the pound sign than on the right. So it can't be of the form W, W. I don't even care what is on the left-hand side. It can't, it can't even be equal because that's different length. Same thing, if it's on the right-hand side, then uh, you just pump up, you have more characters on the right side than the left side. Case three, what's another case that may happen? Yeah. 
I'll have that case last. Yeah. So what if I include the pound sign? So if V or Y contain the pound sign, what could I do to pump out? Uh -huh. Yeah, pump up or down. Why would going either direction work? It's not a string in the language because the strings in the language have exactly one pound sign. So if you pump up, you're going to have at least two of them. So it can't be a string in the language. So pump up will... So I could have pumped down here, but it, I'm going to pump up for concreteness. We'll have at least two pound occurrences. Okay. Is that all the cases, though? Well, it, not only the pound sign, but if V is on the left side of the pound sign and Y is on the right side of the pound sign, but neither contain the pound sign. Okay? Well, look at our original string. If V is on the left side of the pound sign and Y is on the right side, what is V entirely full of? Ones. So if V on left-hand side and Y on right-hand side, then V entirely consisting, can't spell consisting, consisting of ones and Y of zeros. V, X, Y, Z, and this, like, they have to be characters? It's a partition of the string. Okay. So U, V, X, Y, Z is a partition of the original string. But pumping V and Y the same number of times will always stay in the language. Yeah. Oh, so if, if there's a bad choice, we made V, 0, 1, and Y, 0, 1, pumping's not going to be this then. Then that wouldn't, that wouldn't work because V would be here and then Y would have to be there. It has to be a partition of the original string, okay. according to these rules. Okay. So uh, since VXY has length at most P, the V part can't hit the first set of zeros because it would have to traverse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So other questions? All right. So if V is on the left side, Y is on the right side, V is entirely full of ones, and Y is entirely full of zeros, what could we do to pump out? What if we pumped up, let's say? Then what's our justification for why we, if we pump up, we get out of the language? Correct. Good. So increase number of ones on left-hand side, but unchanged on right-hand side. And those actually are all the cases. So L is not a CFL for that reasoning. What's that? No, all four of those cases. Yeah, well, you need to handle every decomposition. Yeah, so that's why those are all the possible decompositions and wrapped up with the cases. Yep. So when you're choosing the strings, I notice when you're going through each of the cases, we're, we're looking at V, X, and Y in every possible mm -hmm. decomposition for mm -hmm. it. So, so there were cases where V could consist entirely of zeros and ones, right? I would assume that well, X, Y would just, could just be uh, the remaining ones if it's on the left-hand side? Or, or the right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it if it um, if either one contain let's say V contains a zero one in it, mm -hmm. then Y would only can only be ones, okay. because it appears after and it can't ever go past P characters. Gotcha. Yeah. And conversely, if Y 
contains a zero one, then V can only contain zeros. Gotcha. Yeah. So we're just looking at all different mm -hmm. combinations so that we Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other so yeah. For all of these places you talked about that we yeah. have the system Yes, the setting I equal to zero. Um Let's see. I can actually pump down in all four cases. I think. Yeah. First one, if you pump down, then the length of one side decreases, but the other stays the same. Same for case two. Case three, if it contains a pound sign, then if you pump down, then you'll remove the pound sign because you removed the one copy of V and Y. And so therefore, there are no pound signs left, so it's not in the language for sure. And then in case four, um, if you pump down, you'll decrease the number of ones on one side and keep the number ones the same on the other side. So instead of like up here, it'd be down. So, so I mean, I'm not for sure, but we can use the other option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, the value of i can be can work for each decomposition and be totally different depend on, depending on the decomposition. It doesn't, it could be all the same, but it doesn't have to be. Well, are there other cases here that could happen? Well, it's either all in the left half or all in the right half or straddling the middle. That's the actual term, straddle in the middle. Um, and the two cases are for that, if either one contains a pound sign or neither do. And, and those are the only possible cases. Yeah, because it's a partition. So if it's not a partition, then you can't say that. Other questions? Oh boy. So I'm gonna make a PDA, PDA up on the fly. Uh, PDA to CFG. Uh, no, I should have one more without transition. So this will take a little bit of time. All right, so is this PDA, as is right now, good in order for me to convert it to a CFG? No, what's wrong with it? Triple Epsilon, and I think we have one where it pushes and pops. So I'm going to make it in a different color because I'm nice. So what do we have to do to, to these two transitions? Uh, break them up. So this, so this one, we uh, didn't read anything. So I'm going to have it. Oh, what did we do on that? Oh, we didn't do anything. So we got to push an arbitrary symbol on and then pop that same symbol off. And then same thing for this guy over here, except I got to go to a different state. I'm going to, so which one should I do first, the push or the pop? The pop first. And then we got to, oh no, I did it backwards. My bad. Yeah. 
And then now we can erase that transition. OK? So it's just breaking up the transitions as we need. Are we done? Nope. What do we need to do? Do we have a final state that has nothing coming out of it? No. So we got to make this Q1 non-final and then triple epsilon my way over to a final state. And what is this final state going to do? Yeah, pops everything off the stack. Well, the things that it appear to be on the stack are A's and B's. So I need to have transitions that pop B's and A's off the stack. It's, it's um, because we want to ensure that we end empty or have a way to end with an empty stack if we want to. Yeah, because uh, when we analyze the stack height, we wanted to match pushes with matching pops. And we can only do that if we have ensure that every transition changes the stack height by one in either direction. So that's why. Uh, PDA, PDA to CFG. Yeah. Is this PDA ready yet? No, what's wrong with it? Triple epsilon transition again. Well, luckily, after we do this one, we'll be finished with the conversion. Uh, no, it should, get, it should not go there. So let's push a B on to not change the stack alphabet. B, B. But we had to add that transition, which was a triple epsilon transition. So that's why. Now is the PDA ready. <laughs> Finally, it is. OK. So first type of rules that I'm going to be making for the CFG, what are they going to be? Yep. A sub state, same state, goes to epsilon. Good. So let's make, let's say, two of them. We don't need to make all of them. A Q0, Q0 makes, so this is the first rule type. A sub Q1, Q1 makes empty. Among a bunch of other ones. Every state. Mm -hmm. All right. Type two. Two examples. Any example? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> All right. So A Q zero Q one will make what? Good. Yep. Fantastic. So that's one of them. Let's do a more, uh, one that branches out more, let's say. Would yeah. Would A Q5, Q5, yield A Q5, Q5, A Q5, Q5, Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. As long as it's the same in between, yes. Yeah, it has to be the same in between. So you want to do it for Yeah, so uh, these two have to be the same. Right. And of course, these two have to be the same, and these two have to be the same. But you do that for all uh, triplets of states. Yeah. All triplets, of, all 
choices of three states. Yeah. Quick question about the type one. So would, would it, will it stay of the consistency of A and then uh, Q? The, the name, the, the name's not important as long as, that's the way we made it, but the name's not important. Okay, so it's just. Yeah. I prefer you do it this way, but as long as it's clear. Okay. Yeah. So you list all of the uh, states you can make it. Yeah. Q sub n, Q sub n, 2 epsilon. Yeah. So th it would make seven rules right here because okay. there are seven states. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. Another example of a type 2 rule. Any example? Q0, Q4, or Q2? Uh, you choose. A, Q0, 2. Q, Q4. Q4? All right. What's it going to make? Uh, so Q0. Mm -hmm. So Q0 is always the first guy. Uh, then we have to go to Q0, Q1, right? Because uh, we're all down to step. No. So the f of the variable on the left, the first guy, Q0 in this case, has to be the first of the variable, first variable on the right. The second one has to be the second of the second variable. And we only have two in that. Yes, so all chain. exactly two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it'd be a Q something Q4. Yeah, Q4. But what can go in the middle? Anything. So any choice. Q3. Q3. Perfectly valid choice. And I do this for all... I guess, so I'll make 343 rules here, because it's uh, 7 cubed. Why does AQ3 work there? Because um, it's the strings that take me from Q0 to Q3 concatenated with the th strings that take me from 3 to 4. Gotcha. So that's one way I can take from gotcha. 0 to 4. So yeah, it's, it's just assuming I can solve the two subproblems, how do I get the no. big subproblem? Oh, okay. Big problem. Yeah. So that's where, even though there's not like Q zero Q three, like it's like an immediate transition. Q zero Q three. That that's a get, yeah. That's a variable that makes other things. That, 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 yeah. That it's the matter. it's the push trans and pop transitions that'll make the difference. So those don't even have to be related at all. What has to be related? I mean, the, the middle. No, 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 no. Those two have to be the same. They have to be the same. But they don't have to be. Like, there doesn't have to be a valid tab. No, no. So I could I could make um from Q three to Q four to one to Q five. Yeah. He's saying that you don't look at the graph or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um well uh if it, if I wanted like Q five, Q three, that is not a reachable path. Right, because you're gonna make that rule anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna make it anyway. So it's all possible kind Yeah. So yeah, so one and two, I don't even look at the PDA at all. Other than other than the state names. I don't look at the PDA so at all. Just yep, just pure, yeah, just pure, pure enumeration. Oh, yeah. So the only possibility of having problems, I guess, is um, with rule three, because uh, then you would look at the transitions. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what is a type 3? Let's do one of them. So pick any transition that pushes some symbol. Any transition you have in mind? Q0 to Q1. So that so I'm going to rewrite that transition down here. Doesn't matter it's a start state. Now, any transition that pops the symbol B. Q1 to Q4. Okay, that's fine. So, Q1 to Q4. So, what was that? That was epsilon B to epsilon. So, what rule am I going to add here? Well, what am I trying to get from and to here? Yes, a q zero q four. That's what I want to get from and to. 
Yes. So the thing I read on the push transition, which is the symbol A, the sub-problem getting from Q1 to Q1 is AQ1, Q1. And then epsilon, which I don't write there. I mean, I could, but there's no point. That's one rule. It may do other rules, of course. So um, if I remember correctly, it's P, Q, R, S. Yeah. So this, um, no. well, those are the four, but it's not in that order. Oh. It's P, R, S, and Q. Do R and S have to be the same state? No, they may or may not be the same state. Okay. Yeah. It's just, if you can solve the sub-problem in the middle, could you solve the larger one? And that's all this is about? Yep. That's all it is. So do they do R and S have to be sequentially in order, or is it no. again just all possible combinations? All possible combinations where the first transition pushes some symbol and the second one pops the exact same symbol. Gotcha. Because we're trying to match a push with a matching pop. Okay, that's okay. So since we've shown yeah, yeah. since we pushed a B, we need to look at everything that pops a B. Yes. And make yep. those transitions. Yes. And then look at the next thing that pushes something. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the only like type three rule for A B or C. Yes, because there's uh oh, Yes. In this case. Yeah. Because but because, the zero, the because there's the awesome. because there's no loop on Q one. In order to get from zero to four, there are only two tra uh, two transitions there. Uh, no. Yeah, be uh, that actually is correct because there's only one transition out of Q zero to Q one, and only one into Q four. So there's only one real path directly from zero to four, without going all the way around. So, not enumerating everything, but that's the outcome. No, uh, yeah. So uh, I would never ask a question to enumerate all of them. Okay. Uh, th that'd be absolutely ridiculous. Well, on such like homework and such like that. Like, yeah, that's, yeah th that's why I said at the beginning, uh, like, do at most 50. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you made 50, you've made a program by now, unless you're really dedicated. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm hmm. All you're doing here is if you can solve the middle two state subproblems, which is A, Q1, Q1 in this case, can you solve the Q0, Q4 uh, problem? And the way you do that is you read whatever you do on the push transition, then concatenated with whatever the subproblem makes, concatenated with whatever you read on the pop transition. I put them on. So, all you have to do is look at a transition with a matching pop transition. So, the first one pushes a B, and the second one happens to pop a B. As long as it's the same symbol being operated on the stack, then those two transitions will make a rule in the grammar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have one for that too. Okay. Yep, exactly the same symbol. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So for the homework, we don't have to. We only have to like write a couple of them for like. Up to fifty. Yeah, for all the three rules. Yep. They won't die before you put them. No. No. Uh, but if you if the total number of rules is less than 50, you're expected to enumerate them all. But if it's more than 50, do 50. You can put more, but there's no need to. Other question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Every sing every single state. Correct. 
correct. There's no way. So why am I going to include that anyway? It's for correctness reasons. If I, if I want to look at the variable a, let's say, aq5q0, that variable will generate nothing because there's no path from q5 to q0. And so therefore, th this variable will be used, but it'll be completely useless, which is okay. So I, may, I will have extraneous rules and variables that I do not need, but I'm going to include them in anyway. Yeah. Other questions about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to look at um, all the transitions that are going to data entry, including the double, uh, the triple S one as well. Well, you have to fix those first. Everything. Yes. Yes. You have to make any final states that something is coming out of your tree. You have to make it become final and then fix that as well. Yeah, make it triple epsilon to a new final state which pops everything, then fix that transition. Yep. So for that last one, let's say that for the top row, let's say that that was an epsilon. If that was like k, what would change for the whole? You mean what was popped? If what was red from q1 to q4 to k. Yeah, so, oh, what was red, okay. So, like if I change this to a K, let's say, yeah, then it would be a K here because this was K. Yeah, it's what you read on the transition, then concatenate with the variable in the middle, then what you read on the pop. Other questions? Um, yeah. As far as uh, she, she, she had her hand up. Yeah. No, it was that right Sure. Okay, so here's a pretty simple grammar. If I want to make a PDA for this, what do I do? Yep, so what do I got to do first? What's the very first thing that I do? I push a special symbol, in this case a dollar sign, on the stack. You guys. So then I go to a state, then what do I push? the starts uh, variable, which I did not indicate here. So let's say that uh, this is the start variable. So then I got to push S on the stack. Oops, not read S. No. Okay, now what do I do? Yeah, but before I get to the rules. Where do I read? Well, we read if there's a terminal on top of the stack, remember? If there's a terminal on top of the stack, we, what do we do with it on the stack? Pop it off. And then what do we do with the input? We read that same character. We pop and read in parallel. So we add a self loop on that state for every terminal in the grammar, which happens to be A and B in this case. So we read and pop the same character in both of these. Okay. So now we go to the rules. So let's do uh, I won't do all of it, but let's do that rule here. So if I want to have the rule S goes to ASB encoded in the PDA, what do I do? 
you have pop s first. So epsilon, epsilon to s. And then what do I do? Oh, thank you. Yep, you're correct. Now what do I do? Push B or A here? B, because we want to push the right-hand side in reverse order. So we got to push B. Then we got to push now S. And then we got to push the, the terminal A. And that's it. And then now we got to do it for the other three rules, which I won't do here, but it's exactly the same process, no different. Yeah. Okay. So what do I do here if I want to apply the S to A rule? No. Uh, no, uh, you should use, diff it, I mean, you technically could, but it's just for correctness reasons, you should, yeah. Um, so here, uh, what, what should I do if I want to apply S to A? Pop S first. Not push, like I did now twice. And then, now what do I do? Push A. Yeah. I don't know what the question is. So the A to So you mean A to B yes? Yep, so you, you come out popping A first instead of S. Well, I'm about to do that No, you, you, would go, you would make another looping part that comes out. Yep, you make one for every rule. Okay. So, we always come from that because that's on Yes, always. Always. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, guys, guys. Yeah, do nothing to upset. Mm -hmm. Is this PDA finished? No. What's the language of the PDA as is? Does this PDA as is accept anything? No. So what language is it? Empty. So if I want to actually have the same language, what should I do? Add a final state. And what should I do with the mission? Spot pop the special symbol. Good. So that's exactly what I do. And I could push something on there. If there's, uh, I don't have to. And then I go to a final state. It's exactly the same for every CFG. No, you have the four base states. Start state, you push on a special symbol, push on the uh, starting variable, and then one to go to a final state. Th those four states will always be the same. Always. But then for the third state, you have transitions where you read and pop off the stack the terminals of the grammar. And then for every rule, you come out and come back. As how as we have done. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're doing the derivation on the stack because you see the variable on top. You remove it and then apply the derivation in reverse order. Yep. Other questions. 
Always. Yep, always. Oh. Always. 100%. Yeah. So for the midterm, can you give us like a list of every single thing that relates to somewhat comprehensive list of processes we need to know just to reiterate like the basic concepts of the process? Sure. Sure. Oh, you're not wearing the shirt today. I'm wearing it on Wednesday. He's wearing it in his mind. He has a tattoo. I'll answer. So it's everything. Everything since midterm one up until today. So, so for uh, the actual uh, book stuff, it's from the whatever we did in chapter two, uh, chapter three, and I guess chapter four, it, up to the very end of chapter four. Yeah. Yep. 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 No. It it may or may not have other rules associated okay. with it. But it's going to have the like A zero one B zero with Q and all that. Yeah. As first type, same state in both of them, and second type, all three triplets in the way that we've done, and the third one just matches transitions. We still have ten minutes. Yeah. 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 Um, for, I guess my question kind of related to that one more. Uh, there are processes in this class we're learning algorithmically that we have to perform in exactly the way we learned in class. Yep. For the exam, I mean, the ones we've learned since the next time, not for the exam, but ones that we've learned since the last time, mm -hmm. we have CFG to PDA, yep. which is an algorithmic process. Yep. Mm -hmm. PDA to CFG. Correct. We have when we're creating uh, something into a Chomsky normal form. Yes. Am I missing any other algorithm, like do it like we did in class processes that anyone else is aware of? Or like, any other ones? Barring okay. what we did on the last exam, NFA to all that stuff. CFG to PDA. Yep. PDA to CFG. Mm -hmm. CFG to CNA. Yeah. Yep. CFG any others? Yeah. Was that an algorithmic process though? That's not really an algorithmic process, but it, it is a process. But, but it's yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. So we got four so far. Yeah. PDA, CFG to PDA, PDA to CFG, CFG to CNF, and I mean just creating a CNF. I try to come up with the same thing. <laughs> is there a second? No, I'm just saying we need more three. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think. That's, it's been, I think it's important to talk that it's been like exactly as I'm discussing in class. We're missing something. He's only got three. We did. I mean, we did have DFA was exactly the process. The GNFA was exactly the process. Notice how long I've been quiet. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna we'll like look back to our notes later and be like, oh wow, we missed one. I'll let you, I'll let you guys figure it out. No, no. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Other so questions, yeah. I do have a question. So yeah. what we find what we do have to do in conversions, mm -hmm. we do have to do conversions for that work. Is one of those specific rules we cannot apply, do we have to specifically say that we cannot apply it? Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. But what? But like, um, well, the first two you will always apply because right. there's always a state. The third one, you, the only case where you don't apply it is if there's either zero or there's either zero transitions or every transition does one of the two operations. I, think, I was thinking more on the, um, yeah. The, yeah. the one where you're to, uh, for the final state, you have to pop off all the stuff. Yeah. That actually takes you out of the language. Like, no, no. Like it doesn't take you out of the language. It takes you out of the method. Oh. But b because you don't read on those transitions. So you don't change the set of strings that you accept. But but for the CFG, it'll have different structure. But if you but if you do 
It, it can't. But the process won't be the same now. What's that? CFGs are defined for CFLs. No, I'm just saying, for, I was trying to think of one of the algorithms. Well, that's not really an algorithm that process, though, because those are different things. Well, well the, no, they are the same thing, actually, but yeah. No. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the first part of it, I would say, is like frequently contextually. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's the language that we know is not context free? 0 to n, 1 to n, 2 to n. So if you can find a language whose shuffle is, maybe with other help, is 0 to n, 1 to n, 2 to n, then that's an, a prime example and you're all set. Is it, you just pick the strings out of the language, rearrange all the letters in that string in any way you want, put all of them in shuffle. So if you can somehow end with a shuffle, uh, of the language such that uh, the number of zeros, ones, and twos are the same, then that's not context free. I just think it comes to mind like But you have to have an example uh, language L to start with. No, you have to have a fixed language. Yeah. No. Other questions? Yeah. Oh. No. no. If, if it says anything about that, then uh, it'll also say th that. Um, List this many rules of this type, list this many rules of this type, list this many rules of the third type. And it doesn't matter if you know what Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yep. Other questions? We still got five minutes. Yeah. Guys, guys. Yeah. Rearrange the letters in the string any way you want, just put them all in. Just that individual string, put it all in, but do that for every string in the language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the PCI Yeah. 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 All right, guys, guys. The process is exactly the same. So for A to BS, you would just pop A off. And push S on. And then come back, uh, pushing beyond. Yep, it's the third one every time. Yep. Other questions? I can let you guys go a little early. Thank you for looking Yep. Yep. Any last questions, though? Uh, pop A off, come back with a triple epsilon.
Yep. Which is impossible to Go on. Which then, if we were then going to a CDFL, we'd have to fix that triple F one. But what we're just going to go into a CFG, yes. CFG. Yep. Yep. But that's not easy. No. Okay. Uh, if we have no more questions, then I'll see you on Wednesday.